Flying is incredibly freeing. You can go anywhere within the limits of physics. You know, people think about driving as uh, freedom, but you're stuck in this one dimensional road. When you fly, you really can't go anywhere. At Magpie, we're trying to change the world of flight with fully electric planes that tow each other to solve the problem of battery density. They're Corvids? Yeah, all Magpies are Corvids, the Crows are Corvids. It's all the, it's all the smart birds. So you have a history of putting things in the sky and attaching ropes to them. Yeah, yeah, I've done that a few times. I cut my teeth in electric aviation at Makani and Kitty Hawk, flying things on tethers and uh, electric aircraft. Magpie combines both of those in a pretty unique way. I met Andy when he came out to interview at Makani. Built some big flying crazy things together. Aviation has this 2050 net zero goal with carbon. That means the aircraft they're buying today are going to be in service when they want to hit this goal. What's really important in the space is that you have a solution both that can kind of retrofit into existing fleets, but you also want to be preparing for kind of newer designs, new technologies at the same time. So we basically see three other things that people are trying in aviation to reduce emissions. Biofuels, electrofuels, and hydrogen. So biofuels, the problem you get is you need a ton of farmland. Electrofuels, the problem you get is that it's extremely inefficient and hydrogen has very much the same problem as electrofuels. Okay, can kind of stop and chat with each other, like you're discussing and you're working They're burning a lot of gas in that thing. Man, that's a tiny it's jet. Way too expensive to operate. These jets, they'll get over here and they'll idle for like 20 minutes, and they're burning almost as much as they do in cruise while they do that. And then they take off and burn a ton of gas down low to get up to cruise. And so for flying a jet any kind of short distance is just insanely inefficient. There's a lot of things being looked at in the industry now, a lot of technologies, but there isn't really a way to say, hey, how are you gonna fly the world's average flight distance, which is like a thousand miles, without any emissions, true zero emissions. We thought what we need is what is the de facto solution on the ground already, which is battery electric. It's insanely efficient, much bigger emission reduction. One of the side benefits of electric aircraft is they're extremely quiet. Batteries are not there today and they're unlikely to be there um, in the future. And what that means is that you can't take off with all the fuel you need to make a long trip. Batteries are awful. They are more than 10 times heavier for the same distance of flight than jet fuel. And so that means that if you want to do a 1200 mile flight, you have to somehow get energy up to the plane as it's flying. What we're doing is we're trying to bypass that problem through operations. So you want to like fill people up in an electric plane, attach a rope to them about a mile long, and then pull them with another electric plane. Yeah, when we first thought of it, it sounded insane to us too. So we have tow planes that come up and, and tow a payload aircraft. It tows you until that battery is empty, goes and lands, and a new one comes up and takes you for the next segment of your flight laughed this idea out of the room many, many times. It doesn't seem intuitive at all. It wasn't intuitive to us, but once you do the math, it actually works out really well. It's all based with technology we have available today, and it's an operational solution, really. And what we were surprised to find is like we couldn't disprove it. And so we kind of came to the conclusion that if we can't disprove it, then we gotta go try it. Um, and that's the only way we're gonna find out, and so that's what we've been doing. This unlocks a huge new capability for EV tolls as well, which not only have to carry the batteries for crews, they have to lift them with their own power as well. By us towing them, this unlocks a huge increase in range. You know, in order to do this sequence of tows, all of the aspects of that have been done before, but no one's reconnected on tow in air. And so what we focused on first was the, what we call the active hook, the thing that enables that connection safely and reliably. We first did a lot of simulation and then did a lot of truck testing. It's like a cheap way of doing wind tunnel testing where you hang your active hook on a tether behind the truck and drive down a country road where there aren't any cops. The one that didn't fly, and then we got the one that flew but didn't track very well. Then we had the one that flew and tracked really well, and then we had a slight iteration on that one, second to last revision, and then we did one more revision to clean everything up and make it a little more robust. It's got these paddles here that can steer it around and have super tight control. And we went up and tried to do the connection and we did it like first time and it was, it was really cool to see. 
It was so amazing seeing the active hook work for the first time. I think it was just, it's that moment you need in a, in a startup journey where everything you work towards conceptually and, and in engineering kind of comes together in that one moment. Now we're taking this design and we're building one that flies a lot higher, a lot faster for a much bigger payload. Fly in more diverse conditions like uh, turbulence, icing, all weather. And so that's what we're focusing on now is, is enabling the technology to actually serve commercial flights. Uh, I think my favorite and least favorite thing is that Andy is always right. <laughs> like legit. Damon is always pushing everybody around him to achieve the, the best. It's also the best and the worst thing, right? I mean, it's like, it's like really annoying sometimes and, you know, really pushes us to, to you know, excel in, in other times. So. What does this do? It creates B-roll. <laughs> so it's fake, okay. <laughs> no, it's not actually. So we need to learn in the real world, which for us means flying. So today we're going to do a quick maintenance flight and make sure we fix a whistling problem on the aircraft. The joys of uh, working with aircraft is that there's always something to fix. You know, aviation has a history of trying a lot of crazy things. Magpie is one of those uh, one of those crazy ideas that we're, we're trying to take to uh, commercial relevance. Around 20% of the world has ever stepped foot on an aircraft. Um, and so there's huge potential still for growth. And so to me, sustainable aviation is really about growing aviation, having more of the world fly and connect and benefit from all, uh, all the things that you know, aircraft enable us to do. But of course, doing that in a way that, uh, that allows us and the planet to continue thriving. Flying connects the world, and we're trying to make it 100% sustainable. Hey everyone, I just finished editing the first episode of Saturday Startup Stories. It took a little longer than I thought it would, uh, but I think we made the deadline. It's Saturday night, we're supposed to release on, release on Sunday, so it's good. The end of these videos I'll sort of use as a platform for any announcements or updates, as well as a hint for what next week's video will feature. Think of it like a Marvel after the movie teaser scene. First of all, I want to thank you for the amazing response to the video I posted last Sunday announcing the series. It's so cool to see that so many other people feel the way I feel. We just wish that this series existed, so thank you for the great response. And I wanted to let you know all the ways that you could like interact with Saturday Startup Stories. There's obviously the main thing, which is this video, uh, but then there's also a quick newsletter blog uh, where it'll be like some highlights and some quotes that aren't in the videos uh, that are funny and amazing, but just like didn't quite make it. There's like an incredible quote from David in this video that is good there. Um, and there'll also be a Spotify playlist for each episode. And you might be like, why the hell is there a Spotify playlist? Well, a friend of mine, uh, he's one of the most talented composers in the world, and his name is Sister, and he's doing custom soundtracks for each of these videos. And they're also like custom tailored to each startup too. Over time, we'll like add them all to Spotify. But in the meantime, we're, we've made Spotify playlists per startup per video um, that we used when we were creating the reference tracks for the soundtrack. And we figured why, why not make startup playlists a thing? That seems like cool. Thank you again to Damon and Andrew for letting me film them and being crazy enough to say yes to being featured in the first episode of this thing. Um, I'm super happy with how it turned out. I hope you all are too. If you have any suggestions, comments, ideas, whatever, let me know. Thanks for watching. I will see you next week where we'll turn everything into words.